All right, state your name and uh, the info. State the info. The info. Okay, my name is Kasha Rose, and I played Marion Ferguson in Ma and Pa. What else do you want to know? <laughs> um, how was how was this process for you? I mean, I don't know if it was your first film to do, but um, what were some what were some things that you did that you had never done before? relating to a project of this size for this topic. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. it, w it was not my first film, but it was the first film that I was able to be in from ground level all the way up to finished product. And that was absolutely incredible. Um, the, the purpose of the film is for uh, the Webb Historical Society. And as such, it is a student-led project. And so I was so excited as a theater major to be able to have the opportunity to, to be one of those students who was leading the project. So we went, um, Elizabeth Griffin, who played Rita Ferguson, and William Jones, who played Dan Moody, who, as everyone knows, is the main character in the film. So. He's in the title. So. He's in the title. I and renamed the title. So, so uh, William Jones, who played Dan Moody, and Morgan Capps, who was the author of the original paper that sparked the idea for the film about Mom and Pa. And who else was in the research group? Um, the, uh, Hector. Was Hector, Hector Zuniga, yes, who played William Hobby. Mm -hmm. um, so those, and, and myself, those five students and our honors director, Andrew Yox, all went to the uh, Dolph Briscoe Center in. Uh, Austin, Texas, and we spent almost a week for hours a day in the library researching and uh, figuring out who was doing what at this time in history, and we got to uh, be script writers. We took all of that information, and something that we did uh, this year, Dr. Yox is our history professor and our honors director, and so what he did is he gave us a historical groundwork and for the script and then what Morgan and Liz and I were able to do is take it and something that had never really happened before in honors films we were able to put a, a ton of humanity into the script which I think especially for me and Liz is a huge thing as actresses um, to really connect to the audience not just to give them a product that is informational but to show them these were real people and they had real problems. The same problems that we have, they just look a little different. So to be able to connect with the audience on that level, not only from the acting standpoint, but also at, at the ground level of the script um, was super fun. I was talking with um, my cousin the other day, she was watching the film and I was telling her how we were very intentional about, um, like for instance, the way that Miriam used Bible quotes because she she claimed that she was a Christian, but she definitely did not display the characteristics of a Christ follower. And so some things that we would have her do is, um, you know, either misquote a scripture or we would have Jim misquote a scripture to her, or we would have her throw scripture in Weta's face in a context that was just totally, I mean, not loving or kind in any way. Um, so it was really fun to play with little kind of stab stab character elements that hopefully not only in that context but in other places will hit home with the audience. That was the amazing part of script writing. And then getting to come in and you know actually play the character that we had worked so hard to try to make it accurate and and developed and human. That was amazing. <clears throat> Um, I guess my one question would be, what was the funniest thing that happened? The funniest thing? Oh, wait. <laughs> the funniest thing that happened while filming. Probably. My favorite thing that happened was pretending that we didn't know what Frozen was. <laughs> which is a story that has been told in another video, so I will not retell it. You can go watch the interview with Elizabeth, and she and I kind of tag team tell you that story. 
Um, but that was probably my favorite because it was just one of those, if, if you are a performer or if you have a good friend who telepathically communicates with you, you will understand this. When you look at each other and you're like, we're going to do a bit. We're going to have them. <laughs> we're going to have them going. We're going to trick them to anybody. If you've ever done that in your life, that's what we did. And it was so fun. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, and we did not get the reaction we expected because they were angry. We, <laughs> we just expected them to be confused, but they were angry and yelling at us. Before they figured out it was a lie, they were angry because they were like, how dare you call yourself theater majors? You've never seen Frozen. How dare you call yourself a Disney fan? Yeah, just... I do remember one instance, there was a costume malfunction right at the beginning of filming. Which um, one? Where I believe... <gasps> oh yes, that the he he just did this and reminded me of what it was. Um, I I had this particular dress that I wore. It was a blue dress. If you watch the film, it's in one of the very first scenes. It's a blue dress that I wore, and I think I talk about it a little bit on a bonus feature somewhere. But it the the collar was very tight, and this was not a dress that was custom made for me by any means. This was a, we had this in our costume closet, and we needed a dress for that scene, so we used it. It was that kind of thing, and so it was a little bit small, basically everywhere, but especially in the neck and in the shoulder area, and so I had a, a teacup in one hand and a cookie in the other, and I tried to raise them to my mouth, and I realized that I couldn't move my arms. I was like, like I, I was just stuck. It was like a straight jacket and it in hindsight it's very amusing. In the moment it was a little frustrating because I couldn't do the scene as well as I wanted to, but everybody else found it funny. So we made a memory. Um <coughs> Yes. Did you talk about that one time the first night of filming it where you were trying to produce tears and couldn't? Okay. Um <laughs> I, I promise I actually can produce fake tears. Uh, as an actress, I feel like that's kind of a requirement, and so that is something that I have practiced and that I have done successfully in shows. So it shouldn't have been a problem. But that night, I don't know what it was, if I was just not in the zone, if I was just exhausted or frustrated because we were having to do such a late night, I, I don't know what it was. But I just could not bring myself to actually cry and in hindsight it's not a big deal at all because you couldn't really see my face anyway it wouldn't have mattered if there were tears streaming down my face or not but in the moment it seemed like a really big deal so I'm trying to cry and Liz is trying to help me and maybe you can help me tell the story because you kind of had a different perspective but I was like I got it I remember one time I was trying to fake cry and I couldn't do it and I started singing a song from Les Mis and it, it got me to cry. And so I'm trying, like, pulling out every sob song in Les Miserables that I can think of. And it's still not working. And uh, Liz, tell them about how everyone else was acting behind the camera. Because I think they were a little freaked out. And it, it got to a point where Kasha, when, when the song didn't work, because we had just gotten done, like, singing. I think, I think that part of it was probably why it didn't work for you. Because at that point we were singing, like, you know, songs from Les Mis, but it was getting funny, and so it, I, it was, that it was, was why it wasn't funny anymore, and which, I mean, that's why it wasn't sad, it was amusing, so anyway, Kasha had to resort to a different method, she was pacing, and, like, trying, I, I don't know, you're doing a bunch I, of body movements. I, I was, I was pacing back and forth, now that you mentioned that, and I, I can breathe like I'm crying, far more easily than I can actually produce real tears. And so I was like, okay, I'll start with the physical and work up to the emotional. So I'm basically hyperventilating. Mm -hmm. Like I'm pacing and making myself hi hyperventilate. And and with, with her face, you know, everything, uh, as she was trying to cultivate that, she, she looked very distressed because she's a good actress. So she looked very distressed. She was hyperventilating. Her face was contorted to this, you know, miserable expression. I'm not a pretty crier at all. And like, it's bad. <laughs> so I I understand what she's doing, and I'm like, okay, she, she, you know, let her do what she needs to do. But people are watching her and looking at me, going, "Is she okay?" And people like were walking in the room, like not knowing what was going on. And I was just like, "Don't disturb it. It's a delicate balance. Don't disturb it." 
And so it was kind of like that scene off of Tangled when Maximus is trying to sniff out Flynn Rider <gasps> and his master like grabs the guy by the face and says, shut up, don't move. <laughs> She's on to something, so it was really funny. It was just like, ah, uh, glamorous life. Yeah, super, super glamorous life of an actress in an independent school film. Really, really great. No, but that was, I was definitely frustrated in that moment, but it is definitely is a memory that is far more fun <laughs> now um, to think about. And now that I don't have to do the scene anymore, it's a lot easier to laugh about it. Mm-hmm. And it all worked out. You can go watch that scene in the film and see that it's... It was beautiful. It's fine. Um, speaking of which, what was your favorite scene, like, to do? You en- Obviously, you enjoy acting, but what was your favorite acting-wise? My like? favorite scene to do. Mm. That scene was really fun because... the Previously mentioned, the storm scene where Doris and Weta end up in the bed with her because I got to yell really loudly like and it was a distressed yell not an angry yell and so that's that's always fun to to play the damsel in distress I guess and also I got to wear pajamas for that scene I apologize for my phone's bad manners um I got to wear pajamas for that scene I got to sit in bed for most of the scene so that's always nice when you get to sit in a comfy bed not move um and then just kind of the flipping the tables of the daughter Doris played by our dear friend Morgan, um, Doris is now kind of beyond comforting, coddling her mother, where you can imagine as the favorite daughter, as when Doris was small, that Miriam would have done the same thing. You know, if Doris had been afraid of the storm, that Doris would have come called in the bed and been rocked back into being placated by her mother and the tables just get totally turned. So that was kind of a fun relationship dynamic to get to play. Uh, I also really, really enjoyed the scene where I got to wave the knife in the air and chop the carrots. I think in the original script that Dr. Yox wrote, that was supposed to be a frying pan. I don't remember exactly what he had it scripted for me to do with the frying pan, but somehow in the midst of our late night character development script writing sessions, the frying pan was changed to a, a huge knife. And so we're getting ready to prepare for that scene. And I don't know if you remember this, but I was like, okay, what props do I need? I need the knife. The bed and breakfast that we were filming at, I just borrowed a big knife from them. And then I was like, okay, what what am I going to be chopping? I thought, what vegetable is really loud? And so I asked, I said, I need a loud vegetable. Those were my words. And this was the response I got. Um. And I said, okay, uh, carrots. I need carrots. Oh, okay, we can do that. And so then I was brought carrots from the supermarket while we were, you know, filming something else. Someone ran out to the supermarket and and brought carrots for that scene. And so then I just got to, like, furiously chop carrots, which is always great. And it had the exact desired effect of feeling super dramatic and, and kind of fueling Miriam's anger in that scene. And, of course, waving a knife around is always fun, so... That was one of the most fun scenes to shoot, I think. It was fun to watch. Um, one last question. No, one more. Anyway, um, as a screenwriter, co-director, and actress, all of those responsibilities, um, in addition to the many that were informal, um, <laughs> what was it like working under all that? It was stressful, naturally, but not nearly as stressful as it could have been. Um, What made this honors film so spectacularly different from other previous honors films is that we had a, a core group of students who came to the realization that this actually is a student led project. And while our previous adult leaders had been, you know, great at their jobs, it, it really was always intended to be a student-led thing. And so we had all of these students who were not theater majors, not film majors, not anything like that. We had three theater majors out of the whole casting crew, just three. Um, but just all of these other students who, and it helped that we're all friends. <laughs> um, that helped a lot. But they all were like, wait a second. If we're going to make this product, the film, 
we are going to make it the the best darn film that we can possibly make it on an independent film budget. So, you know. Um, but yeah, everybody just kind of got motivated and it all came together and um, teamwork makes the dream work. And so, you know, we had Jessica as our director doing logistics of, okay, this person needs to be here at this time and this person needs to be there at that time so that we can film these different things and everybody will be in place for as soon as we finish this, we can move on to this. And so everything stayed organized. Um, we had Isaac and William on the camera and the boom mic. Uh, something that had been different in previous years for honors films is we had had one camera angle for every scene, and it was a um, solitary is not the word I'm looking for. Um, nope, nope, nope. Something that stays still. Um, the the maybe stagnant. Okay, but the point is it stationary. Stationary. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> it was a stationary camera angle, and so what you were seeing. There wasn't a lot of movement as far as blocking goes between the characters. So what you were seeing is is basically a picture, a still picture that was talking. And visually, even if the audience is very engaged in the dialogue, visually that's very dull. And the brains, because we're all ADD these days, um, your brain just gets bored. And it's like, oh, we're here, you know. And so something that we really wanted this year was to have enough rehearsal ahead of time that we could churn out the, the takes. So take one, okay, we're done. We did that great. Let's do a different camera angle now. And so that's something that you'll see um, in that is very different about this film uh, as opposed to previous honors films is we have some, some of those dynamic camera angles as much as we could um, with the time and the resources that we had allotted. And uh, personally, I am fascinated by reflection photography. So anytime, I'm, I'm a photographer as well. And so anytime that we got in a room and there was a mirror, I would look at Isaac, our cameraman, and be like, can we use this mirror? Like, please, please, can we, can we do a shot in the mirror? And so you'll see one particular shot that I definitely was like, I want to use this mirror. And Isaac like, let's do it, you know. Um, so that was something that was different. <clears throat> and... So Isaac was doing cinematography, William was on the boom mic. Those were also things that when those two had scenes, that everybody everybody was super flexible. That was another thing that was amazing about this group of students um, and friends is that we were all like, yeah, you know, whatever. It, it very much reminded me of uh, the, the church in Acts where they're like, okay, if you have a need, I'm going to meet it for you. And so when William couldn't be on the boom mic, somebody was like, oh, yeah, I got that for you. And so everybody's trying new things, and everybody's having each other's back, and it was a great, great bonding experience for to, to the lay the foundation for new friendships for the following school year. Uh, one final question. How did you feel about uh, Kermit the Frog's gracious uh, appearance in the film? It, it was so gracious it really, really of, of Kermit to, to, to grace us with his presence. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, there's a particular scene where, where Miriam is talking to a convict's sister, and she's trying to have her brother pardoned. Um, the convict sister is not Miriam. Uh, and, and Miriam is going to grant that pardon, and it switches rooms. And Jim comes in and tells her that there's a price to pay for second chances. And you'll notice that in that scene, Kermit the Frog is just kind of casually sitting in the background, watching over our humble project. Um, just he, he was very a, a great uh, morale booster. For yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. Um, also, I, this is a little known fact, um, Mickey Mouse also made a little cameo appearance, but un unfortunately we had to we had to cut him out. But you can go watch the bonus features. Um, I believe that will be in the the goofs section of, of things that we overlooked. Um, yeah, Mickey Mickey Mouse will be there. He's he's toward the bottom of, of the shot, so if you just look for him there, um, you know he'll be there. A little shout out to Disney and the Muppets. Yes, a little shout out to Disney and the Muppets both. Anything else? Is there? Like, oh goodness. Um, I guess thank you to all of our sponsors who made this possible. Huge, huge thank you. We could not do it without you guys. Um, a big thank you to Dr. Yox for uh, arranging our lodgings and the bed and breakfast that we were staying in were also 
the bed and breakfast at which we filmed and um, to Dr. Ox for allowing us to to breathe that humanity into these characters that was an amazing experience to be able to to kind of weave the, that in um, and to all of the people who loaned us costumes and Bill Kinnison of the Historical Society in Salado um, let us use their family house they're related to LBJ and so there's a historical connection there we got to film in their house their family home that was amazing and to everyone else who did anything, even this tiniest little thing, to make the film possible, it was amazing. Is that it? I don't know. Thank you. Wrap.